So today I'm doing a crank trigger wheel for SR20. Uh, this is the part number from DIY Auto The reason for the upgrade is that the one on the car was breaking up on the dyno. It was losing a crank signal according to the tuner. So we're gonna change the crank trigger wheel, see if that helps it. If not, then it's probably gonna be a wiring related issue, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, you can actually do this on the car, but I'm gonna take it out just to show you guys how to do it um, on the bench. But uh, just two 12 mils to hold the crank angle sensor in. It's one here one under here there's actually a groove in here so you can get a tool in there and one connector and that's it it just comes out if you're replacing it with the stock wheel or changing the crank angle sensor um, for another OEM unit you should put the engine at TDC so it just slides out and slides back in as long as you align the dots on the crank angle sensor which I'll show you later um, I don't have to worry about this because uh, we have to change the the timing uh, base timing with the new wheel anyway so it's not that big of a deal all right, so the crank angle sensor is off. It's uh, There's two screws here, one on this side, one on this side. They're just regular Phillips head screws, and then this cap is gonna come off. It shouldn't be very tight anyway, so. That's it. All right, and now you can see there's a Phillips head screw right in the center. Um, that has to come out as well. And then this this disc is gonna come up. You have to hold the gear from turning because when you try to loosen this, it'll want to turn the whole crank angle sensor. So there you go. There's a screw. This washer. And the disc comes up. That's it. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, um, grooves in the wheel. It has 360 degrees of resolution, I guess. Um, the new one, the new one is less. It's a uh, more modern style, so you can see. So it should give a better reading, less chance of a uh, misfiring, I guess. And it is marked with this side up. Make sure that face is up if it wasn't uh, clear. All right, let's go ahead and put the new one on. Um, it is a, a D shape so that it can only go on one way. Put that on. The washer is also a D shape so it can only go on one way. And then the, the screw. Sure that's uh, pretty snug, uh, and nothing looks bent or anything like that. All looks good, and that's pretty much it. Put the cap back on. It'll also make sure that it's not the disc; it's not dirty. Um, this one's still clean, so let me just make sure. Two screws back in. That's it. It's ready to be reinstalled. Um, and then you have to change your uh, timing settings on the ECU, which they supply the information for. Just follow what they say, and uh, it should run. And then. We have to go dyno the car and see if it makes an improvement. If not, then we come back and double check wiring and all that stuff. So, thanks for watching. And for anyone who's doing just a, a crank angle sensor um, install, the second second dot from the left is TDC. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and the second one is TDC. The crank pulley bolt is a 27 millimeter. It's pretty big. Um, if you also want to verify if timing is correct at TDC on compression, you can pop the, number, the oil cap off and check number one cylinder. 
the cam lobe should be facing outward as long as mechanical timing is correct to begin with uh, as far as installing the crank angle center goes it's essentially going to go in like this there's a dash on the housing there you can see it and there's a dot they have to line up so when you put it in make sure they're lined up and once it goes in the gear is going to turn and it's going to be set correctly and that's that